Hello, I'm Robbie Byrne, and today I'd like to talk about Benito Mussolini. Now, the 20th century sees a rise in a lot of these dictatorship figures leading up to the Second World War. Uh, most famously, people obviously talk about Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany or Toja Hideki's Imperial Japan. Uh, but people forget a lot of the times to really discuss the third part of that Axis power, uh, Italy. Uh, Stalin, Hitler, and Tojo are always very much talked about, but Mussolini was just as a fierce and terrible dictator, and he kind of actually was the one who originally spurned on the rise of dictatorship movements. Uh, and I think it's important for us to not really just cast him in the shadows of Hitler, uh, and to really remember that he was also a truly impactful and horrific figure of history. So Mussolini and I actually share a birthday. Uh, he was born on July 29th, 1883 in Pradapio, Italy. <clears throat> his father was a socialist writer and a blacksmith, and his mother was a Catholic school teacher. Uh, he, though, was a very terrible child. He described himself in his own autobiography as not a very well-behaved young boy. Uh, and that's putting it lightly. He was kicked out of multiple schools for various incidents that included stabbing classmates uh, and accused sexual assault on quite a frequent basis. Uh, and after having a tumultuous childhood as a young adult, he fled for Switzerland in 1902 because he did not want to be drafted into military service. Uh, here he kind of tried to gain uh, traction in the socialist movement, uh, even being arrested uh, for two weeks in 1903 for uh, strike advocacy. Uh, but after another year, he returned to Italy, and he ended up having to serve in the military for two years to make penance for dodging the service beforehand. Um, and in 1909, he began an intimate relation with his stepsister, who would become his second marriage. Uh, and then he established a newspaper, uh, The Class Struggle. And the paper would become so popular, he ended up becoming the editor of Italy's official socialist new paper, newspaper, Avanti, which means forward in Italian, uh, by 1912. And after he took over, this already big paper's audience was spurred by five times its original viewership. Now, originally Mussolini was actually very anti-war. However, he began to be influenced by ideals of nationalism and saw uh, a kind of good benefit for Italy to get involved in the Great War at the time. Um, in late 1914, he actually resigned from Avante, uh, and he was kicked out of the Socialist Party of Italy for his rising pro-war views. Uh, in December of the same year, he became editor of uh, Il Popolo d'Italia, or The People of Italy, uh, and he announced the birth of the Fasci di Ezion uh, revolutionaria movement, also known today as fascism. Uh, with his opening editorial piece, he uh, stated, from today onward, we are all Italians, and nothing but Italians. Now that steel has met steel, one single cry comes from our hearts, long live Italy. Uh, and after this, Moodily enlisted for war when Italy was finally uh, involved uh, in the early years of 1917. Uh, he did not last long. He was actually eventually discharged or uh, due to minor injuries. Uh, but after the war, he began really pushing the nationalist fascist party's ascent. Uh, and this kind of culminated with the rise of the Black Shirts, which were a paramilitary group uh, that were the front for the fascist party. And he began to really rile up uh, Italy. Uh, they very much focused on attacking local government institutions and attacking socialists. Uh, they would burn unions down. They would uh, even kill uh, opposition opponents. Um, and eventually, all of this started shifting more and more control towards uh, Mussolini and the fascist party. Uh, and by 1921, the liberal party and the socialist party were now being pushed back by this third group. Uh, Finally, in the summer of 1922, a huge union strike broke out, and the government could not put it down, but Mussolini and his black shirts did, which spurred on a new growth of popular among a lot of the general public who were against the striking unionists. Uh, and then finally, Mussolini, during a rally in that year, threatened to march on Rome if the government was not given to the fascists. 
And finally, uh, the king gave in and summoned him to Rome. And he marched all the way to Rome with thousands following him the way there. And on October 28th, uh, finally, the fascists were given power. And on October 31st, Mussolini was officially named prime minister by King Emmanuel III. Now, many Italians welcomed Mussolini. Uh, they were tired of Italy's constant dysfunction and hoped the new figure could revive Italy's reputation on the world stage. And from 1925 to 1927, Mussolini really transformed Italy into a one-party police state. Uh, the Christmas Eve law in 1925 effectively ended any hold Parliament had over Mussolini. Uh, it ended all local autonomy, and the only one Mussolini really answered to was the king. Um, and by this time, people didn't even care. Uh, he was so popular in the social programs and economy were becoming so successful that they began calling him Il Duce. Uh, and the moniker of the trains running on time that is quite famously attached to him began to take hold over Italy to try and say, look how efficiently society was run, regardless of how uh, true that is, is that's something that historians debate quite heavily. Uh, Alongside uh, his social and economic regrowth of the country, uh, like Hitler, he was also set very high on imperialistic thoughts. Uh, he wanted to rebuild the Roman Empire, essentially. Uh, he began strengthening Italy's grip over its current territories uh, and locating allies in Europe. Now, this ended up shifting him towards allying with uh, Adolf Hitler. Uh, and by 1936, they had formed the Rome-Berlin Axis, uh, which would become the Pact of Steel in 1939, and then the Tripart Pact with Japan in 1940. Uh, during this time, Italy also invaded Ethiopia in October of 1935. Uh, previously, Italy had failed to invade Ethiopia, and it was a national embarrassment. This time, though, with a new military with enhanced technology, Italy absolutely wiped out Ethiopia. Uh, the brutal war was even ignored by the League of Nations, and uh, it literally took uh, six months, and it, um, Italy had completely taken over Ethiopia. <clears throat> At first, uh, Mussolini was actually against the Second World War. Uh, he went back and forth on even maybe starting to form some sort of relationship with Britain and France. However, uh, German victories blitzkrieged all over Europe, and Mussolini felt pressure to join in on his side. And as France began collapsing, Mussolini felt like he had no choice if he wanted to get anything, and he joined the war on June 10, 1940. However, it was already too late, as 10 days later, France had already surrendered, leaving Mussolini as the clear junior partner to Hitler in the war. Um, and then even uh, Hitler in Nazi Germany didn't even tell Italy that, oh, they were going to invade Romania and the Soviet Union, absolutely blindsiding them in their military plans. Um, Mussolini also did some invasions in the Balkans to try to expand his territory. Uh, notably, Albania was a clear success. However, uh, the 1940 invasion of Greece was not great for Italy. It was a very long and drawn out war. Um, and then by 1941, the UK had driven troops into Greece and Italy could not make heads. In fact, the Greece counteroffensive was making great grounds against the Italian military. Uh, and Hitler saw this as a threat to his regime. So he sent reinforcements into Greece and they absolutely wiped the floor with them. By um, Within the span of one month, the German army that came in absolutely wiped out the Greco-British forces. And Greece was occupied by the Axis, but it was an embarrassment because uh, it was essentially now run by Germany. Uh, and Italy's kind of grand plans were put back because their military could not uh, keep up with Germany's. <clears throat> Germany also had to begin assisting Italy in North Africa because they could not really hold the front there. But by 1943, it was essentially a useless uh, front anyway. Um, and later on that year in July, the Allies invaded Sicily, and uh, by July 24th, uh, the Fascist Party voted to dismiss Mussolini from office, and the king took away his ministership, and he was arrested. However, the Germans uh, did not like this because the new uh, regime replacing Mussolini was pro-armistice, and so the Nazis came in, freed uh, Mussolini and turned 
<clears throat> turned North Italy into a fascist puppet state for Nazi Germany, with Mussolini living out his last days as essentially a puppet leader. Uh, as North Italy began to fall, he tried to flee for Switzerland, uh, disguised as a Nazi officer. However, he was caught by Italian communists, and they took him and killed him and his mistress, Claretta Petacci, uh, on April 28, 1945. Uh, and the bodies were then strung up in the streets, hung upside down, uh, as Italian crowds cheered at their dead former leader, who they once admired. Um, and that's uh, a short summary of Mussolini's life, but I think it's important to get into some of his harsher infractions. Uh, Mussolini and the Black Shirts killed countless tar uh, countless, countless Italians during their rise to power, especially socialists. Uh, and also Mussolini, uh, kind of spurred on by Hitler, had passed some anti-Semitic laws. And due to pressure, he gave up around 20% of the Jewish population to the German concentration camps knowingly. Um, and Italy was also a surveillance pl uh, police state, like any of the major powers at the time that were in a dictatorship. And they held any opposition to fear and uh, greatly negatively impacted the Italian population. Uh, but Mussolini was much more cruel outside of Italy. Uh, in 1923, when Mussolini began clearing land in Libya so Italian colonists could start to spread, they began mass executions of resistance. Um, and through the 1920s and 1930s, Mussolini also uh, placed relocated Libyans in a concentration camps. And some estimates put the death total of half of uh, Libya's entire native population at the time. Uh, Mussolini's campaign against Ethiopia was absolutely permeated with war crimes. It was probably his worst atrocities as a leader. Uh, they ordered the use of mustard gas, which even the Nazis did not use. Um, they placed uh, Ethiopians in the concentration camps. Uh, they purposely focused on attacking their medical facilities so they could not try to... Uh, get their soldiers back on their feet. Uh, in the initial invasion, they killed over 382,000 Ethiopians, tens of millions of animals, uh, and destroyed hundreds of thousands of buildings. Uh, and during uh, occupation, they killed tens of more thousands of Ethiopians and placed even more in camps. Uh, one incident alone in 1937, um, there was a attempted assassination on the Italian official at the time. And uh, in... Uh, in uh, retaliation, Mussolini ordered one-fifth of the entire population of Addis Ababa, which is the capital of Ethiopia, to be wiped out. Um, all through the Balkans, especially Yugoslavia, Italy carried out similar tactics to what they did in Africa and killing countless innocents um, and using concentration camps, although not to an extinction level like the Germans did, more like a work level, still had committed great atrocities to these people. Um, and even in Greece, uh, Mussolini ordered the theft of the Greece food supply uh, to feed his army as they were on supply shortages, and it led to a Greek famine that killed over 300,000 Greek civilians. Um, in conclusion, I think Benito Mussolini is an important figure whose rise, rule, and ruin is of great interest to the study of dictatorial figures and nations. Uh, he's a really atrocious figure uh, that was deficient in ethics even from a young age, uh, who was completely ignorant of human rights, uh, whether dealing with his own people or others. Uh, and I think it's essential that he not be left behind in the face of his Axis allies, uh, like Hitler and uh, Imperial Japan, because he was just as gruesome and just as crucial a face of the harsh dictatorial legacy that stains human history.